uh, year sixes. So it is our English lesson now. Um, it's a short video today because as ever at the start of a new unit it is going to be your cold write day today. But I want to give you just a little bit of detail around what it is you're doing so you know what to be getting on with. So for your hot write today, oh I'm forgetting the starter, here's me getting ahead of myself. Let's have a go at a starter first shall we. So what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to write out and then complete each of these sentences below using, using either is or are. So you need to decide which one you would use. I'll then go over the answers with you and explain to you why they are the correct ones. What's the grammar rule? What's the reasoning behind it? So have a go at that please and then start the video up again when you've done it. Okay, so the first one is singular. I know it's stamps plural but we're talking about the collection of stamps and collection is singular there's only one collection it might contain lots of things but there's only one collection because it's singular that is why we use is so when something is singular we say is when it is plural we use are for example and this is an unusual one here these trousers too small now trousers it's a really odd one, and I actually only learned this recently. You can have a trouser. Trouser would refer to one leg of the trousers, but trousers is both. So there's more than one of those legs, which means we say these trousers are too small. Now, the last one's a funny one because you feel like 100 years, there's lots of them. There's 100 of them, in fact. However, it's the 100 years. We're lumping them together as a century. 100 years, just one of them. So it's is. 100 years is a century. So remember the rule. Is a singular, are for plural. Next one for you to have a go at. I want you to circle the correct word in each set of brackets. So which word completes the sentence properly? Is it was? or were, and again, was and were tell us the, nu the numerical amount, the, the number of people, whether it's plural or singular. So you need to think about, is it gonna be the plural or is it gonna be the singular? Have a go at that, and when you've done it, start the video, and I'll go over the answers with you. Speak to you in a second. Okay, so the first one, neither of the pupils were paying attention. There's more than one pupil, so it's were. If it's plural, it is were. If it's singular, it is was. Hannah and James weren't enjoying the game. Hannah and James, two of them. More than one means it's plural, so we have to go with the were, not the was. In this case, weren't. Each of the children was amazed because it's referring to each of them, one of them at a time. That child was and that child was, those children were. So each of the children was amazed at the sight. Okay, our cold write today then. You're going to be having a go at writing a persuasive letter. So the first thing I'd like you to do, just before I tell you, have a think about what you already know about a persuasive letter. What do you think is gonna go into our persuasive letter. What features are going to need to be included? When you've done that, start the video and I'll show you what I think needs to be included in your persuasive letter today. Speak to you in a second. Okay, so the things I'd like you to have in your letter, I'd like it to have a formal tone. That means no contractions. I'd also like you to make sure that you start with either dear or to whom it may concern. I'm not going to tell you what the rules are between those two, but we will talk about that in the lessons that follow your hot, cold, right. It needs to end with yours sincerely or yours faithfully. Again, I'm not going to tell you the rules between the two. You should already know. You've done letters enough. I'm sure most of you do. It should use modal verbs. Those are the words that show a degree of probability. 
should contain a really clear understanding of both sides of the argument. So you shouldn't just be using one side of your argument to be persuasive. You should show that you understand both sides of a debate or both sides of a discussion. It should be a well-reasoned argument and it should therefore be laid out in clear paragraphs. And then finally, it should be using the subjunctive form. Now, if you don't know any of those things, that's fine. You can still have a good go at this cold right. If you do know them, this is your opportunity to show me that that's an independent skill you're capable of, which is really, really good for the portfolio of evidence we're building up to say whether you're an age-related writer or a greater depth writer. So, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be writing a cold right of a persuasive letter from either Virgo or Elliot to the Zodiac Council that we read in chapter, well, that you will have read in chapter nine. You can now read the rest of chapter nine. So Elliot or Virgo are writing to the Zodiac Council and they're asking that Virgo doesn't get fired. They're sort of begging, asking, trying to persuade the Zodiac Council not to fire Virgo. You, need, you can choose if you want to be Elliot or Virgo right in the letter. You're going to need to think really carefully about why the events on the day shouldn't be blamed or at least shouldn't fully be blamed on Virgo. You also need to think about how you can convince the council that you're going to help resolve the problem. That's what you're going to be doing today. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that other than to show you what your sort of success criteria is for today, what I'll be looking for you to include. Remember your letters need to look like letters. So it is gonna look a bit different to the story that you wrote last. They're not the same as a narrative. It tells you the things you need to include there. Do the very best you can. And then for the rest of the two weeks before we're hopefully back in school, fingers crossed, for the rest of the two weeks, I'm gonna make sure that I've then taught you and shown you how to make sure all of those skills are done correctly in your hot right at the end of the two weeks. But for now, though, that's everything I'm going to say to you. Look forward to reading your cold rights. Do the very, very best you can because they're the most independent thing you do. So they're an excellent source of evidence. But for now, that's everything from me. So goodbye.